Hello there, my name is Nick Mark, and these are my dice tales. And today I've gone back to record a game of Cell Swords and Spell Slingers. This is a real book where I had the PDF and had it printed out as a book on Lulu. Uh, it's a very nice little book. Uh, anyway, uh, I now have a copy link, so if you like me doing videos about your game or your publisher, or this is good for you for learning the rules or knowing about the game, uh, you can click on the copy link and you can send me a little bit of money. Uh, so I can maybe buy the next expansion <laughs> and do more videos. Um, so like get that out of the way. Uh, anyway, Cell Souls and Fast Slingers is by my favourite game for the last couple of months and I've been dabbling in it. I have got more rules, but I've had that crisis. I've done some videos on my webcam and I just don't think they picked up the, uh, the detail on the 50mm models. Uh, I've just done this video with my phone cam and phone microphone and I think it turned out better. Uh, so I did have Fear of the Dark and Full Pally videos, but I scrapped them for quality reasons. Uh, so I'm jumping to this game now. I just had three games of Shell Swords and Spell Singers. Uh, the reason I've had three games is I've been playing the Defend the Village scenario, and I was a bit put off by the wording in the rule book. I don't know if the, I've looked for errata, but it didn't really cover that bit. The Defend the Village says draw a card from your monster deck. And if it's minions, that's fine. You fight that many minions plus the number of PCs you've got. Uh, but if you draw a multi-hit point monster, which I did, I drew a Minotaur, and it says uh, increase its hit points and then has no mention of minions. Uh, and the, the game activates with sort of uh, activation cards. When you roll a failure, you draw one of these cards. And a lot of the cards are minions act and horn acts, which only applies to minions, and minions when they get into groups they become hordes, so they don't affect a lone monster. So I was confused on my first game, I kind of played it out, I was wondering do I remove these cards, would that affect the deck? It might do, because of cards that reshuffle the deck, uh, and you get like he's loaded twice maybe, and uh, strange shenanigans like that. And those other cards like Ambush, and their are back, and Reinforcements, that all reference minions and it uh, just had me puzzled. Uh, so then I came up with, oh well, I'll make up a boss battle idea where instead of having minions, because uh, maybe it's specific that this is a either a fast scenario, that like you're just fighting one big boss and it's a bit hectic. Now my first game I, got, I engaged the, ma the Minotaur and there wasn't very much movement uh, and there wasn't very much villager gobbling, although my villagers under attack I want burning buildings or dying villagers, you know, some, something heroic to defend. Uh, and then my first game, I've engaged the one monster, so now my camera was just focused on one thing, there wasn't one. I love board movement, I love moving around the board and terrain and stuff like that. So that put me off, so then I came up with the idea, well, I spoke on it on the on the forum of Song and Blades, where they can also talk about some Cell Swords and Spell Singers, the same, same company that makes, makes the game. And, um, Someone suggested making a table for how the monster reacts, and I thought, oh yeah, okay, so when I draw a minion card, the monster's going to do this, like a lesser attack, because it's a minion card, and when it draws a horde card, it can do, you know, a slightly more powerful attack, maybe it gets a plus to the attack or something, extra speed boost, so I made up a little table, and then I played this game using that. Uh, also, in that rule book, um, the game has a card called Scenario Events, and it doesn't have one in the rulebook for this particular adventure, so I've made one up and I thought, okay, panicking villagers running around, uh, when you see this in films, you know, they knock over the, bar the uh, barrel of oil that trickles away to the candle which is about to fall over and set things on fire next to the explosion keg or something like that. Uh, or someone will fall over and knock themselves out and needs to be saved. Uh, and I was thinking, okay, so this scenario has, when you activate the monster, uh, so it moves, and then the villagers move, and I thought, well, that makes it quite hard for the chase of the Minotaur to catch the villagers, unless the Minotaur activates twice somehow. Uh, so I thought of ways of stopping the villagers moving, so uh, my scenario event, you know, pick a, pick a villager, and some tragic <laughs> accident's going to happen to him. Uh, he'll trip up, knock himself out, twist his ankle, can't move, the, uh, the heroes have to come and save him, otherwise there's a chance because he's not moving anymore. Uh, and then my minion cards and my horde cards are going to try and give it a bit more dynamic movement to my monster so you can get out and get some gobbling going on. Um, anyway, that was the gist of it. 
Uh, let's go into the game and see how it goes. Below is a link to my blog where I, I'm not a very good writer, so do excuse my writing in my blog. Um, but I hope it gets the gist across of the table of events. Uh, and that's how I played out this game, and I thought it was a very fun game. I do like how the cameras picked up the details of the models, uh, so I'm going to go back and do Fear of the Dark and Pull Pally. I don't want this to be a campaign. I want to try and get a couple of missions out of Cell Souls and Spell Slingers and go into the books, uh, campaign events, where you can carouse and uh, enchant weapons and find scrolls and learn new skills and things like that. Um, I'm a bit puzzled because I've got a minor troll attack in my village as my very first encounter. And it was a very tough encounter. The Minotaur is a tough beast for first level characters. So yeah, another takeaway. Because uh, I've played this and this is recording after I've played the game now. My first two games, my barbarian was eaten. Uh, my barbarian got eaten because my barbarian was very brave. It went and tackled uh, the nasty monster which could do two damage. And when you're only a three hit point hero at first level with very little armor, uh, that's not not good, uh, not wise. So in this game I did try and stay back and shoot him with fireballs and arrows but it's a very exciting game. That didn't really happen but I won't spoil it. Uh, I've, cut, um, I've cut out my ums and ahs uh, and I've shortened the video to about 25 minutes so let's see if you enjoy it. There's a timestamp below, I should have said that earlier, that you know, if you watch my videos you know I've got timestamps below to the game, to the middle of the game and you know, to the to the end of the game and then the time's up for the end chats so watch the game see you on the end chats thank you for watching coffee link don't forget that bye hi there welcome back so this is cell souls and spell slingers we've got the table set up for defend the village i'll just zoom out of it here so it's on a slightly bigger map uh, but the main map there that is two by two we're playing in 15 millimeters and this is mostly all my homecrafted terrain We've got a little village shop with a village woman outside with Ragnar the Ranger just nearby. We've got a villager fixing his broken wagon by the hayfield with Bob the Barbarian nearby and uh, a large building. Grief is hanging out by the well. Willow the Mage is hanging out by the well. We've got a donkey which is going to be one of my villagers as well and there's another villager just down there. And that villager has unfortunately just noticed a minotaur coming down the road. So I think this is a good setup for my camera here. If I just knock it to the right, we can see most everyone. Now this building is in the way, I can take off the roof, then we can see the Minotaur. And to be honest, I don't think this building's gonna be getting in the way of anyone. Uh, so I'm actually gonna remove it and use that as my dice rolling area. Perfect. I'm gonna take that as my initiative roll. So the first thing you would do is roll initiative. Now I had goods outside, I'll just place those goods by the well instead and have a bit of super glue to fix that on later on. Meh. Things happen. Right, so initiative. White is for the mage, so it looks like she's going last. Green is for the ranger. Next. Red is for the thief and black is for the barbarian. Actually, you know, that should be the other way around. Red is rage, isn't it? Red. So we'll have the thief go first, then the... then the barbarian. Ranger, Mage. Cool. Lock that in, in memory and see how we get on. So in this game you take three dice and you have to roll over eight to get an activation. You can choose to roll one, two or three dice depending how dire. I'm not too sure on those choices how they work out in the game yet. Very rarely I've chosen to roll less than three but when my Barbarian got into trouble with the mind so I started to see maybe the pros and cons of you know rolling one dice just to get a, dis a disengage might help. I think there are some tactics in there, but you know, let's let's just defend this village and we had a token out left over from last time. Let's remove that. Looks like I can put a turn marker on this field. There we go. Turn one. Minotaur heroes, villagers, kill the Minotaur. And um, we're not having any minions in this. I have set up a scenario event. Should we draw that card? Again, that's not in the main rule book. I've got special activations, but if I draw a minion activation card, or if I draw horde activation card, and that's gonna basically give my Minotaur, some sort of boss-like abilities. We'll see if they turn up. So, uh, who, was it, who do we say went first? The Thief. Three activations. And he needs to get over eight. One, two, and he's failed one. So failing one means we draw a card. And I've got Monster Axe. The closest monster to the PC Axe. Literally, 
don't need to make any changes to this card. I think that villager is safe just outside of the Minotaur. So he's going to go gruff, snuffling for food and bear down on that villager. So now the villagers act after the um, monsters act. So I'm just going to roll a d10 for them and they move in that random direction. So that villager is going to go backwards, fleeing from the Minotaur. Very wise little man. Should we... I feel like they're so far away, I shouldn't really need to bother with the other ones. We'll do the donkey. Eight, the eight donkey. Smelling the Barbarian. Smelling the Barbarian. Possibly smelling the Barbarian as well. But smelling the Minotaur. He's got to kick himself out of that uh, walled pen there. Yes, you can just about see my donkey there. Let's spin round. And we've just got these two villagers there. Are they going to be stupid or uh, smart? This one's running into the cornfield. And finally, the shopper woman. Looks like she's going back in the shop, so I might even forget about her for the rest of the game. So, chomp. Easy peasy. There we go. So that was the first fail activation. Now let's see if the heroes can pick up what is the thief going to do. So he can't see the monitor at the moment. He can hear the kerfuffle of the donkey and screaming villager. He's just going to move to the edge of this little forest equipment and shoot his crossbow. So the move was fine, but now we need to make an attack. Because it's a large target, uh, so I'll just quickly go over the Greater Minotaur stats. I'll just yeah, might as well put the card on the screen. So he's a loner, he's big, he's savage. I think he's quite hard for a first level party because um, he does two damage. So we really don't want to get into close range. My last two games, he has killed my Barbarian. So we're going to be staying out of six inches on him. If he gets two moves, he might catch us up. So normally, is a DL13 attack. If it charges us, it's, that DL goes up to 15. Can potentially destroy my shield, uh, but if I'm shooting it with ranged, his DL goes down to nine. That's gonna be his weakness, that's what we're gonna take him down. So fireballs, crossbows, and Ragnar the Ranger. If he gets into melee, we can't shoot him because no one has the fire into melee at the moment. But anyway, cocking that crossbow, bang. If it's over eight inches, we will get minus one every two inches after that. So, He's within 8 inches, so that's fine. I'm using a slightly different scale, uh, so I've got a modifying table, which you can't see, just off camera. So when it refers to an inch, that kind of equates, 8 inches equates to about 12 centimetres for me. I do a 1, a fifth, yeah. basically an inch is 15, 15 millimetres. That's how I've been playing it. So I've hit, oh no, first blood. Fortunately, he's now shot his crossbow. And I'm going to whack a token down for, he needs to reload. So I'm going to say, like, broken weapon token there. Okay, who do we say next? I think it was a Barbarian. Barbarian's pretty stuffed. He's died in the previous two games, so he doesn't want to get up close and personal. I'm very tempted to put in a rule saying, you know, it has to be killed in close combat. You know, make it, make it that dicey shoot, 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 and then someone's got to go in for the final kill. But I won't do that for now. Oh, I could have that as a scenario event or something. The monster's tough for, I don't know, random table. Anyway, not for now. I think... I'm still going to take three actions with a Barbarian. He can get over to the Donkey and that Villager, you know, get them out of the way. He can be the target to lure them away from... lure the Minotaur away from the Villagers. That's something heroic for, for him to do. So three activations. Oh, I always forget, whenever I see a seven, I do have leadership on my Ranger. I'm going to say I use my leadership. No, I'm not. He's going to use his leadership on the wizard because then the wizard can use a fireball. That makes more sense. Right, so we've got a fail there. And two passes, 9 and 16. So let's see what the fail card is. Well, the activation card is. Monster Axe. Can't look in that. So I'm not going to have any of my new cards yet. Is he close enough? If he wasn't close enough before, he shouldn't be close enough now, I reckon. I'm going to give it him. It's not far off. I'll give him a, a benefit of the doubt. He's charging down that villager. Let's see if the monster eats a villager! Four! He needs to roll over 13, that's a fail, we've lost a villager! Oh, nom nom nom! Deary me, so villagers are extra XP, I think. And now the donkey is going to do a random move. Two, uh, it's going towards the forest, so I'm just going to guess it round about there. And who have we got a villager in the field down there? Two, just running off. It looks like he's going to get off the board, he's fine. So I don't think we really we have to worry about the donkey. I don't think the miner is going to be bothering the villagers too much now. And then I have two activations. So I'm going to move my barbarian over to... Where what? I should measure this, you know. I'm just... I'm, I'm being very abstract. Yeah, it's not close enough. 
think you need to actually be touching them to calm them down. This, that donkey has just seen his master slaughtered by a giant cow. I don't know what a donkey would feel about that. Okay, Barbarian's acted. I'm pretty sure Ranger was last. Willow the Wizard, the dreaded druid. Ooh, I was going to say I was going to give him a plus one for my leadership, but it uh, doesn't look like it's going to come into play. Two fail cards. Two activation cards. Scenario events. Now, for scenario events, I've got in the panic of the general chaos of a village under attack. When things panic, things get knocked over, things can set on fire, or people can get tra trapped in the rubble. So maybe this donkey has snared this cart, and he's going to get sna snagged underneath it. And he's going to need help. Now, basically, I've pinned that villager down. And the reason I pinned him down my scenario event is, if they're running away, the, barbe the mine soul might not catch them. So... If he's pinned down, I've now got a heroic thing to do and try and save him. So that was the first one, scenario event, and that says reroll, reshuffle the other cards, all the cards, sorry, into the. I could randomise which villager gets trapped. I've just, I have just jumped straight to donkey there. Should I say, if it's that house, the woman set house on fire? That would be quite cool. Uh, the person in the field could have just got stuck in, tangled in the field. And the donkey obviously could be trapped by the cart. So let's roll d3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's a donkey. 6, it's a donkey anyway. So yes, we've got the t cart trouble. We've got to get the, c the donkey untangled from the cart. So that was the first activation card. He's loaded. And the second failure card or activation card. What does it call him in the book? I don't know. Uh, the monster closest to the PC has double the normal SP. That's a nice one for our heroes. Mark the figure. Well, there's only one figure. I don't need to do that. So this mind shore is now packing D6 times D6 times 2. Now it's my activation. Hmm. So that was two failures. He's not in combat, but I've got my colleagues in the way. I'll class my colleagues as cover for that mind saw. Let's see if I'm within 12. Touch and go just outside of 12. So... The DC is going to go up, it's going to be 9 to 10, and then the cover from the edge of that. No, I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to move. I'm going to move my 6 behind that cart. And I think I'm ready to punch him next turn with a fireball. Fancy painting up a druid model, renaming fireball to Moonbeam. Anyway, that's just my thing. Finally, a ranger. So a ranger's going to need a couple of activations to try and get around here. All his activations have passed. Right. The last game I was dead lucky. I was rolling 20s and having like five activations. I'm going to do a double move. I'm going to go to the edge of this cornfield. Can't use that dice for cover, unfortunately. That was a double move. That's two actions. And my last action, I will shoot my bow. Not within 12. Looks like it's going to be four inches over in my scale. So it's going to be... 9, 10, 11, back down to 10 because I'm trained in archery. Yeah. 18, it's a hit. We've got a wound on our mantle. An arrow has sunk in. Fantastic. Uh, and that's it, end of turn one. So he needs to reload his crossbow. The barbarian's going to have a chance to try and get the donkey out of his obstacle. And the barbarian, uh, the, the wizard is lined up to do a fireball. And we've got a good archery range. We can get a bit closer. I think we're Doing pretty well. I've learnt from my last failed fail attempts at this mission. Let's see what we can do. So we need to turn the turn counter. Turn two. And it was Thief. Thief, three actions. Fail. 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 That could go anyway. Okay. Scenario we went. Oh my gosh. The panicking guys, because this gets reshuffled. It doesn't say remove like the other cards. One, two, and three. Could the donkey get into could the donkey get into any more worse trouble? Or is the cornfield going to set on fire? Or the woman in the house? I'm going to say one, two, three, four of the house is on fire. Okay, so the way I put the scenario, I said I put two tokens on the scenario piece to say, you know, something's happening to it. Should I just wipe them on the roof there? So we've got a silly villager in a burning house. She's managed to set her house on fire during a minotaur attack. Glorious. That was only the first card. And that says reshuffle back into the deck. So it could even come out in the next card. No, in my luck. <laughs> no, in my luck. Come on. Dun, 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 dun. Next card. Cool. Monster Frenzy. All foes in play. So again, no changes to that card in, under my little rules tweak. Uh, basically, there's only one monster, so it's going to do its thing. I think it is in charge. It's going to basically 
maul that traps donkey. I don't think anyone else is really in range. So let's move the camera, let's get a better view of this. Here we go, it's the other end of the village. Right, it's got to charge up. Okay, move that out of the way slightly, give, it, give us a better camera angle. That's the second failed card. Eight! It is, didn't roll over. Fifteen. So I think we just lost our donkey there. <laughs> Two villagers have been eaten. A minotaur ate my villager. A minotaur ate my donkey. At least it's not eating my barbarian yet. Last card, it's another reshuffle card. That might be handy. Someone spotted some treasure. A random PC spots an object in the closest terrain. So we need a D8. No, we need a D40. We had one of those knocking around. There we go. Number one. I'm going to say that's a thief. He's by this forest. That's his closest terrain. He's spotted something in the forest, which is extra treasure and extra XP if he does go out over it and interact with it. Uh, discard that one and reshuffle Monster Frenzy. A lot of shuffling in this one. Fabulous. And one more card, I think. One more card. Scenario <laughs> event. How crazy can that? All four villagers. Right, there's only two villagers left. One, two and three. The woman in the house has caused havoc to a house. One, two, and three. Oh, it's the guy in the cornfield done something. What can possibly go wrong with him in a cornfield way over there? This chap. He's caused havoc. Anyway, I'll just give him two bizarre tokens. He's entangled. He's in trouble. <laughs> oh, I didn't think it would go this way. But that's all the fun of the game and making up your own rules. Uh, well, at least we have wounded the mine, so let's keep on track. He's our main focus. Saving these two would be good as well. So what, what's it saying? We get extra XP if we manage to... I've just said it's a DC 10 to get rid of those and a DC 10. Uh, under, you know, strength or... So strength for saving the donkey because it was tangled. Putting out fire, what would that be? Agility maybe. And guy in a cornfield. Dig him out. And reshuffle. <laughs> Let's just stick that near the bottom of the deck. Can't happen again. That is the thief's turn. Barbarian next. Oh, barbarian. Very tempted, you're very close. You don't have that many things to do. Uh, oh, I did roll at the beginning, he's not drunk this, this game. Eight, he's passed. If that was a fail, that would have been bad. He's just gonna dance backwards. Looks like he gets into the other side of the well. Can't quite see him there. I don't know what we can do with a good angle here. We need to more or less get rid of that forest so you can see things going on, there you go. Okay, so he, he only had one, he chose to roll one dice, that's a situation where I don't, don't want the Minotaur to move. Then it's the wizard, the wizard is lined up, he can throw some fireballs and take that Minotaur down. Uh, pass, 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 three potential fireballs, huh? The fireball is a DL10. Two, the first fireball has fizzled. I haven't had a mana flux this game, I've had a mana flux of one. Oh, I think one on magic means magic is depleted and he, he's now useless. He was my best fighter in this game. I'm pretty sure doing a magic test and rolling a one is the worst thing you can do. Flip, flip, flip. Pain activity, spells. When a PC rolls a one on a magic roll. Oh. Magical energy. He, the winds of power have gone. With his last action, he's just going to move away. Uh, uh, well, I'm a useless wizard now. Get behind that barbarian. I mean, you can go in and whack him with your staff, but you don't want to be gob gobbled up. You have the least armour. You have martial arts. You can try and block a monitor with martial arts. Because you are an elven... elven uh, druid. Finally, let's go back. I think this is going to be ranger plinking away. Three actions for the ranger. One fail. Oh, almost, an act almost a critical. That would have given him an extra one. Hordax, right, this is one of my new cards. So I'm saying when you draw this, look at the table that I've written for the adventure and do that instead. And for Hordax, I've got the monster has a free disengage and may charge the weakest model within six. So basically the monster's literally just gonna move because it's not in charge range. I think I should have changed that to like a sprint, give him a bit more movement. Or even with a bit more movement. I think it's gonna get into huffing and puffing in your face range, but he's not close enough to do anyone any real damage this turn. So I can't save with that. And oh, what did I roll? Was that one failure and two passes, I think. So I'm gonna try and shoot my bow across there. 
12 gets to there. So it's going to be another plus two to the DL. And now he's behind the well. So even though he's large, I'm going to give him cover. Oh, I'm nice to my beasties. I like to make it half for my adventurers as well. So partial cover, slightly longer range. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 13 to hit on two dice. So first one. Misses, not doing very well on dice rolls. Nope, misses. Would have been great if I went to a clear shot. Maybe that's how I need to get, get closer. Yikes. That was turn three, people. That was turn two, now we're on to turn three. These two can focus on the fire and the trapped uh, adventurer. Just lead, lead the minosaur this way, ready for shooting. Right, grief. You need to reload that crossbow. Three actions. All of them are pass. Fantastic. So one of them, reload the crossbow. Aim shot. Aim shot gives me plus three. Aim shot. So I use two actions to do one aim shot. I need to get over nine. I've rolled a 12. I need to get over six. I rolled a 12. It would have been over nine if I was taking two shots. So I've done two damage to the Minotaur. I'm just going to tra track his Minotaurs over here. I haven't got this magical trinket yet put the uh, forest back where it was. I think that was a clear shot and we've done an extra damage to the mine saw. So we're going down. Did we have that? He was a big one. No, he's loaded. He's not got a big one yet. Barbarian. Two actions, Barbarian. Six and a six. He's failed them both. This could be Barbarian getting eaten time. Monster Axe. No changes to that card. The monster just engages. It's a charge. And it's a DL 15. Huh. 15. We scored it. That means we've wounded the Minotaur. Whoa! That's how melee, melee works. See, if you roll over the target number, uh, you do the damage. It's uh, it's all, I like that, but it's all focused on your, the hero's role. It's not the monster hitting, it's successfully defending and such. Anyway, next card. Things couldn't get worse. Things could get worse. So it's going to start raining. Uh, it has a complication. Well, I've got scenario events, but that doesn't count. Uh, shooting attacks, which is not great because I'm relying on a ranger to take him out. Oh, and that did two damage, sorry. I'm just thinking. Because my I'm a double-handed guy. Uh, anyway, so yeah, just remembered that. Uh, if this card comes out again, um, it's not training. So we've got minus two to shoot. Try and remember that. Oh, look, that's an arrow with a two on it. Perfect. Can't shoot. And uh, perfect. Two failures. So that's the Barbarians go. So we had a charge and it started to rain. Wizard. Wizard, try and turn this burning house off. So activations, Wizard. Oh, one failure. Trap. Oh my god, this scenario is crazy. Ah, the PC has done one trap. So you roll a d20. I'm just going to roll a failed one. That's a one. It's a simple pit trap. I've seen the table lots. That is a simple, simple pit trap. Traps. I need to pass a constitution or dexterity check. They're both the same. DL10. DL10. 20. The nimble elf avoids the trap. I'll just use this darker marker here to say there was some sort of pit by the forest. So again, the way it's read here, the PC falls down, hurting legs, minus one to movement until healed, if he fails a DL10 constitution or dexterity roll. So if if I pass that, have I not fallen? It then goes on to say, a friend can help him out or he must pass a DL10 to cl climbing roll. I feel that I've not fallen down because I've passed that first roll. And then I have another two actions, so I'm going to use my two actions to get around to this burning house and see if I can turn off the gas and get that villager out of there. I feel that my wizard would last. Have I done everything in the right order? Because I feel I'm not shot with my bullets, so I think I'm jumping around here. Okay, uh, barbarian's gone. Um, I think I'm just going in closest, aren't I? I don't think that causes problems. You failed, you failed. Well, Baron Baron's not gone. I think that should have been... Right, Barbarian's going to go go now. He wants one activation. He just wants to disengage. So he's failed to roll over eight. Monster Axe. That's fine. No changes to that card. The monster's going to hit me on DL13. Whoa. 20. That's a crit. Oh, what does a crit do with a double-handed weapon? So this is us defending. I think this is us damaging the... Uh... If we rolled less than a 13, he would have hit us. Double check where it crits. Around about 26. 
Critical hits. Attack deals plus one damage. We've done six damage. Basically turn over. I don't know. We've done seven damage. I think we've done it. What the? We've done it. Have I been counting my damage correctly? Uh, Barbarian hits him in a counter-attack. Two damage. I've hit him with the crossbow. One damage. I've just hit him in a counter-attack. Doing plus one damage. That's two damage. Plus one. Three. That's six. Uh, he has seven hit points, I think. Have I have I done myself out of... Did the range hit him? Surely the range hit him. Oh, that's too good. I might just try and hit him again one more with a, with a ranged attack. Right, so Ranger's turn. Three activations, Ranger. One fail, two hits, so I can get closer and try and hit him. What's the fail? Monster Axe. Or, if I pass this... So, before my Ranger gets two activations, Minotaur is going to attack the Barbarian again. If I roll over 13, I kill the Minotaur. Oh, come on, you've got to take that as a 20. You're not knocking, calling that a cock dice. Boom! I'll take that, because I failed twice and it's killed my Barbarian twice. I'm taking that as a win. <laughs> oh, but we haven't really saved the burning villagers or whatever happens to this guy in the field. I'm sure fields can be very dangerous. Um, we lost a donkey and a villager. This, this could be like a heroic... Uh, though it's a win, it is a shady win. Oh, that's, that's not that man. So down. Blooming heck. I'm taking that and I want to keep the video short. So, uh, in the pouring rain, the rain eventually puts the fire out. I mean, we're left to our own devices now. We can just run off and fix these guys. There's no consequences. So do I say I've rescued these and I've picked up that? It's one of those ambiguities. Or has the game ended? Because I've killed the foe. And I killed him on the counter-attack. That's because my dice were much better this game. We'll have a chat back on face to face cam. See you in a moment. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome back. Oh, I love that game. I'm really enjoying Cell Souls and Spell Singers. Uh, I love that it doesn't have classes and you're just a hero and then you just get given abilities from your XP. Now, I am a bit concerned about some of the costing of things. I try to make my adventurers not just be combatty and have skills outside of combat. Let's see if I've got my sheets here. I'll tell you what my adventures are made of uh, and then we'll go into you know the, the game itself so willow is going to be a druid just like a wizard character but she's going to be a druid and um she's my spellcaster she's my most expensive uh character so i can get 28 experience points that's because spellcaster costs 20. she's got martial block so she has something to defend herself with uh, a bit of an elfy um, martial artist and uh, she picks up Fireball. She's also impulsive, so she must always roll two dice to activate. Um, I very rarely roll less than three, but in this game I did when my Barbarian was in trouble. Because I didn't really want the monster activating twice and gobbling my Barbarian. I just went with, you know, rolling one to see if I could disengage. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's tactics in there. Uh, Ragnar the Ranger, uh, he clocks in at 12 XP. He's got a booklet, or just a small shield on his arm. He's got archery, one keen senses, so he's got perception. Uh, so he tries to give everyone one ability score. Uh, he's got leadership, and he's clumsy, so he's not pretty good at climbing. The book says climb or dodge. I don't know if that means climb and dodge, and it's like a mistake. Uh, I'm going for climb and dodge. We shall see. And with the XP that we got, we'll get to that later. We'll do the, the upgrade and the, and the carousing bit. In a minute, Grief the Thief, we've seen it before on my on my demo games. Uh, he's got a crossbow, so he has to reload it. He's got a sword. Uh, he's got traps, so he can disarm traps. Now, I don't think there's particularly very many scenarios in the book that call for traps, but I do want to do a dungeon delve. I kind of want to mix Cell Souls and Spell Slingers with scenarios that I've got in Skyrim and see what crazy concoction I come up with. Uh, he's got Charisma. Um, He's got armor, he's got crossbow, he's got a dependent, so potentially he can have a dependent one dragon to the map that he needs to save. And that's why he's got the charisma, and he's also a healer, so he's, he's kind of a bit of a backstory, I haven't worked it out exactly. He's got this character that he needs to save and heal and be charismatic to other people about, and he's turned to a whole life of crime. 
to try and you know save this person somehow and pay for medicines uh, and going down that kind of route you know very very tropey and finally uh, Bob the Barbarian he clocks in at 12 XP oh so Grief clocked in at 10 because Dependent is minus 7 oh, that's you know really even though he's got all those skills it, that really reduced his uh, XP cost um, Bill the Barbarian 12 XP two handed sword so that does two damage I felt I needed someone doing two damage um, from the previous games when you fight those trolls and things which you've got quite a couple of hit points it's nice to have that two damage on the board he's only got armor he's got strong and he's got fighter and he's a heavy drinker so I have to roll to see if he's got a hangover at the start of the game uh, so I rolled for the dependent and I rolled for the hangover uh, they didn't come up in this game luckily um, I love what the night watch does with you know having to spend actions to pray or dissect and investigate um, yeah, it could be built into this this system as well for, for campaign effects. Anyway, that's what we've got for now. They uh, when they leveled up, let's just go to what we got when we finished the mission. So we got 350 XP for kill uh, silver pieces for killing the Minotaur, even though they gobbled two villagers. I didn't want to give myself a penalty for that. Uh, so 350 XP, that's fantastic. Um, 2 XP because we only had 2 surviving villagers I, I thought even though the house was on fire and he was knocked out when the Minotaur is dead there's no more threats so I can go and save them and someone else on the Facebook group has produced a sellswords and spell singers like a random adventure PDF and he sort of comes out and says well if you do an attack uh, and you're in the enemy territory okay yeah you obviously can't get the loot unless um, unless everyone's dead or something like that uh, but if you're in like home territory and you're defending then once the scenario is complete you can go and get the treasure and uh, such uh, so yeah that, that's what I did here I, I collected the treasure uh, and the loot from the Minotaur and the loot that was hidden in the tree uh, so I somehow ended up with 8 experience 389 silver pieces overall and with that Grief with his charisma, he went and did the trading so he could buy and sell things. He bought a scroll for Willow, so he's got Dart, because I found what Willow couldn't cast a fireball when I was engaged, but I think Dart allows you to cast and hit like anyone. I'm classing that as a magic missile, you know, it's a magic attack. It can target people in melee and such like that. And then I did a living expenses thing. I thought, okay, living expenses not covered in the book. So I just rolled 2d6, so everyone has to spend that amount, so each of my PCs had to spend that, so I think I rolled right about, about 7. Um, they could have then done campaign activities to say whether they became labourers or hunters or joined the militia. Um, I think they just bought their way, they're adventurers, they had a happy uh, 350 experience, so they just spent that and lived, lived luxuriously. Uh, Willow bought some scrolls, as I say. We bought some lock picks, we bought a healing potion, and we bought a silvered weapon because we'd heard stories of werewolves. I didn't want to go into a mission with a werewolf and suddenly find I've not got a silvered weapon. So Ragnar's got a silver weapon, Grief has got some lock picks, the Barbarian's got healing potions because he's most likely to get into combat and get, get stuck. And um, Willow's got a scroll, but because she only has one campaign event, she can't actually scribe it into a spell because yet. So I don't want to spend it, I want to survive to the next, after the next mission and then try and learn it and have some study time in my next downtime campaign time. So, uh, that was it. The game was wacky. I mean, I drew <laughs> every single villager, had something tragic happen to them. That was comedic gold, I love that. Um, my barbarian, <laughs> after my last two games, my barbarian was gobbled. Actually, having doing the counter attacks and slaying the, the Minotaur on the Minotaur's turn was fantastic. Uh, so cool, wackily, you know, random game. Uh, so very cool, very cool. I'm loving it. Um, I put my thoughts in the blog, as I say, very badly written blog below. But if, you know, if that's your thing, check it out. And it's got the rules and what I'm thinking. Uh, Beware spelling checks and punctuation. That's why I'm on the YouTube because I don't have to do spelling checks and punctuation. I hope they'll make a bit more sense here. Uh, what else is there? Uh, I think that's it. We've, we've covered it. So, uh, 
I like the game, want to get in campaign mode. I have no idea what to do with it, but if, if the, the first scenario is just a random Minotaur attack, what should my next adventure be? If you've got any thoughts on that, you know, please do comment below. Uh, if you like this video, please do comment below. Uh, and if you've started following because of this video, let me know what you're playing and such like that. I love that kind of stuff and that interaction. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, as I said, I have played Pool Pally and have played the Darkest Fear, I forget what it's called now. Uh, Perilous Tales, I've got more, I've got so many rule books. It's like a Fear of the Dark, that's a new one. Uh, it's a bit of a narrative one. Uh, it's like they said, choose your own adventure. Uh, so I'm going to have to redo that because of my, my video. I like this video effect. Did you like this video effect? Comment below. Anyway, I'm leaving it. Thanks for watching. These have been Mark's Dice Tales, playing Cell Souls and Spell Slingers, uh, my favourite court game at the moment. I have picked up five parsecs, so I think I'm going to do fantasy, I'm going to do sci fi, and I'm going to do random rule checks in between an occasional mass battle game like uh, Battle Lore and Dragon Rampant and such. So, thank you for watching. Mark's Dice Tales, I've repeating myself so good night goodbye thank you thank you oh uh, i think i forgot to check how i think my rules went for a single monster i didn't encounter them too often like the horde attacks uh the horde attacks was a bit of a letdown that just made my, my monster move um it should have been a disengaging array attack against you know a, a lesser creature like a disengaging you know goes for that villager right to a bull um I try to keep it very, my rule fairly generic. It's so easy to just make a table and say, you know, make up what Horde does, what uh, minions do. It's just coming up with the ideas and making them not broken and playtesting them a bit. Um, so I need to play it again, really, but I kind of want to move on as well and, you know, box that idea off and revisit it when I do this scenario again or a similar scenario. I think there is a, like, a boss battle with a Thunder Lizard and a Spider in the book, so. I'm going to try and play those scenarios and see what the rule book sort of comes up with. Um, and I'm happy to see that in the Facebook groups, other people have come up with similar ideas of campaign and, uh, and boss bottles and their own little missions as well. Um, I think they just need that. I'd like that I found that random quest generator. So you know, roll up, you're, you're attacking in enemy territory, you're defending in home good turf. You're escorting, or you're stopping an escort, and doing an assassination, and things like that. I mean, it's all fairly generic, but uh, it's nice to have that sort of officialness and that page there. And uh, yeah, if they redo the book, I'd like to see that in second edition, and um, and that confusion that I've had. If, uh, not second edition of the book, but I do know this campaign book coming out for it, so I'm very looking forward to that. Anyway, sayonara, goodbye.